Welcome to Happy Healthy Us podcast. Hey, it's Takia. Over here at Happy Healthy Us, we share and uncover creative, simple, and faith-driven solutions to transforming our communities. Now let's get to the core of the community. I'm on my own today, giving you a, an, an episode which is full of my my thoughts and um, I've spent a long time uh, thinking about this episode and, and planning it and thinking about delivering a message which is both both vital but also provides a solution because on Happy Healthy Us it's about how do we grow as a community, how do we celebrate great work, how do we inspire hope and action at the same time. So in the last two weeks, or three weeks, I should say, two major life events have occurred in our family. And on my father's side, we lost our grandfather. And on my mother's side, our uncle was recently discharged from hospital after weeks of battling COVID-19. In both incidences, or both instances, shall I say, um, they, they, there was a lot of major health system challenges and the country, uh, Zambia, it's a low resource setting and they were dealing with and they still are dealing with many issues in the healthcare system such as a lack of oxygen, uh, a deficit of thousands of healthcare workers and this deficit wasn't there just due to COVID-19. It's many lower resource settings that there is um, an international shortage of healthcare professionals that are needed. But it's just that COVID-19 has really amplified this and brought these to the fore for everyone to see. And as a result, it's the patients that suffer. It's the families that suffer. It's a place where medicines um, are reduced uh, access to medicine, should I say, and vaccinations. And we just have to look at the state of the world to see that it's the richer countries that have the resources that can access vaccines, for example, that can afford to vaccinate their healthcare workers, their most vulnerable in society, and then go on to vaccinate their entire population whereas many other countries they haven't even come to the brink of even offering the vaccine to all their healthcare workers or their vulnerable groups of populate of people and then on the same time it's many of these settings where it might not just be COVID-19 that is impacting people, but as a result of the stress and the demand of COVID-19, it's like health care errors, mistakes, inability or inavailability of staff to attend to other other diseases or people suffering from other diseases is, is being affected, right? So my grandfather didn't pass away because of COVID-19, but um, complications that should be minor complications but because of the strain on the healthcare systems the inavailability of nurses and and doctors and and mistakes uh, medical mistakes um, led to this and you know today I wanted to reflect on climate change and COVID-19 as a crisis and What we know is that climate change will not and is not affecting everyone equally. And in the same way, COVID-19 has hit absolutely everyone. Yet some countries will have better health, will have healthcare at no cost for patients. For example, they'll have universal health coverage, which means that they have access to quality healthcare services without suffering financial hardship. They will have more clinicians per patient to look after the patient. They'll have more beds, access to vaccines first and economic recovery measures. They'll have safety nets to ensure that if you lose your job, you will be supported. Whereas other countries, they may even have to choose where they think that they might be affected by COVID-19, but they still have to go on to work because if you don't work, the reality is you won't eat and your family will not eat. So we're having now another discussion of poverty 
or COVID. And the reality is like, okay, if you need to provide for your family, you'll do what it takes to provide for your family. And which it, it takes me back to these similarities. Like COVID-19, the climate change crisis brings the world to a halt. There is no person, region or sector of the world that is not being affected or will not be affected. And yet, and yet, <laughs> this is the big and yet, and this is the big hopeful bit. There is no sector of society or no person of society that does not have a role to play. And this leads me on to uh, talking about understanding your burden, <laughs> understanding the people, the cause um, that you feel compelled to support and understanding how climate change is impacting on this. So discovering your burden <laughs> or your burden to serve, your burden to build to reimagine a better future, a more glorious narrative for others. And um, this is uh, really, this is really essential. Many people have done it, even inadvertently done this already, because it's led them to the way in which they operate in life. It's led them to the industries in which they work and what they're building in the way that they cultivate their family, right? And there is a quote that's helped me out and it's helped me out for many years. <laughs> and a few years ago, I actually did a YouTube video about volunteering. And I use this quote at the time as well, about five years ago. And it's by Frederick Buchner. And it says, the place God calls you to is a place where your deep gladness and the world deep hunger meets. And we need empathy for all causes and people. But there is a place God is calling us to serve and to reveal um, something more glorious, reveal beauty and joy and create a better future. It's a place of purpose. And it could be the certain things that make us angry, the certain things that we have a desire to help. It could fuel our work, something that we're really, really good at doing. And it takes me back to the episode with Marion, it was the episode one of Happy Healthy Us. And we talked about being motivated and fueled by love and that being the more sustainable way, the best way, because it leads us to consider how do I support these group of people? Even though like, I, I'm really passionate about supporting them, it leads us to consider better. It leads us to empathize, to listen, to really hear to remain persistent when it gets difficult and to persevere. Uh, some examples that I can share that may help and encourage you all is uh, perhaps you have a particular passion or desire to help refugees or support different migrant crises around the world. And we know that a lot of um, this is fueled by political instability, war, food shortages, or drought even and this causes a breakdown of communities too but how can we understand how a rise of climate migration um, or climatic events impact climate migration or impact these people or how instability of food or climate change will cause more people to have to move and leave their homes and we discussed this a little bit in the last episode with Ray Wynn on episode five of Happy Healthy Us from the Solomon Islands, who talks about climate migration a lot and the human rights perspective on that. Perhaps you work in the food industry. You have a passion for food, for eating out. You might do a food blog or you're the go-to person for food and for uh, restaurants um, or you're a great cook or you do it as your profession but understanding how does climate change affect food security how is it affecting people now how is it going to start affecting people more who suffers as a result who does not eat because we do or eat in a certain sort of way but um because we do not eat because we eat a certain sort of way. 
how are the supply chains ethical how is conservation done in a way that is sustainable um does the way overfishing over farming using bad bad farming practices um how how can that change right because it's now just starting to see how these things all link together again with Marion's episode it's she talked about a tomato and understanding okay like the work that went into cultivating that tomato and it's just the, the idea about empathy right it's like someone cultivated that for me someone grew that for me and there's a whole system before the way it, when that tomato arrives <laughs> on your kitchen table and you start dicing it up it's like understanding how i understanding the chain basically and seeing okay if i know that climate change is affecting food security what can i do or what is my industry doing um to understand it or even just learning about it you know if I can give another example, so as myself, I'm a Zambian woman and um, I'm in the diaspora and many people are, many people belong to many different cultures, identify with many different cultures, but many, um, many climatic events might be being suffered by uh, your countries of origin or where your family are based and how are these climatic effects affecting our populations right now? And that could be that perspective. Perhaps you do have that real passion and that energy to understand uh, the political system in other countries or, un- or even travel to un- other countries or or just the fact that you're connected in that way. It's like, okay, beyond my community, beyond where I live and reside, how is climate change affecting these people right now? And... Um, if I change it to the healthcare system, if I change it to the healthcare system, it's huge, a real huge space. It's like, okay, so how are, is air pollution, for example, affecting patients, affecting people differently? How are the climatic events that are going on around the world fueled by climate change affecting people's mental health, you know, crises that are happening? How um, is the mental health of a population enhanced? And then also understanding that we know that environment affects health, the way in which you grow, the spaces in which you grow and develop, it affects your your life expectancy, it affects what diseases you will develop. And again, from a healthcare perspective, how is climate change going to worsen the health of my patients? How, how can I best mitigate this and and this could be in any sort of capacity whether you're a doctor nurse administrator a practice manager someone who works in public health in health policy in mental health who is a physiotherapist who's a personal trainer anyone to do with health and well-being that's where you're, you're you're really called to serve and that's where you're passionate about how is climate change affecting the health of the people I work with and the environment? How is the environment supporting them to thrive and live their best life? And how is it not doing so right now? The other thing I'd say, this is a really good one, actually, because, I mean, not everyone's an animal lover, but many people love animals. Um, perhaps you are a traveler. <laughs> Um, and, and when I say travel, I mean like you love to travel, you love to go and see animals around the world, you'd love to experience a different biodiversity, you really champion that. And I was recently in a sea life and I loved it. Like I it's really inspiring my passion to go scoop to learn how to scuba dive and start scuba diving. Um perhaps you already do that and you you do scuba diving a lot. You know, how is climate change affecting the biodiversity of the oceans, of um, the animals and the plants that we rely on for our health? I also went to Kew Gardens recently and I really encourage you to visit uh, and go with children, go with people who really want to learn about this too. It's just a beautiful place to just chill and relax, good for mental health. Um, But they're doing so much work on sharing um, stories and messages around climate change, uh, sharing about how many of the plants we rely on for medicines are becoming extinct and how that will affect people as a result. So again, it's like building those dots, right? Even when you go on holiday, even as you're traveling, planning your next travel, how is my 
impact on climate change as I travel or in that country what's going on in that space how can I share this on social media even as I'm posting my pictures or in in whatever way that this is just some of my thoughts right now another example is religious organizations again from my perspective I'm a Christian woman and I um I attend church and I'm a member of my my church and if I believe our mandate is to love God and to love others as we love ourselves. How is the institution I belong to, the church community I belong to, serving others in this sense, bringing up the discussion around environment and around climate change and around how are we supporting, mitigating the risks for other people? How are we ensuring people thrive and live their best lives? From the standpoint of women and gender, Again, perhaps you, and this should be in any sort of um, any sort of intervention, policy, public work that we're thinking about the effects on women as well, because we know that the gendered effects, the the effects of climate change on gender are different, and um, already women have suffered more they're more vulnerable to some different effects of climate change and the impact on them and will be in future unless the right policies and the right interventions are made now and are prepared now and you and women do some great work um, on sharing about this I recently attended a virtual event about Uh, the gendered impacts of climate change and again if you work in that space if you're an advocate for this it is something to start thinking okay how are women being affected and will be affected what is my role to play to do to share to read to understand to discuss and the last area that I will talk about today is business and this is a crucial one as well because Maybe you are an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you have a side hustle, you're developing a business right now. And just from an economic standpoint, it just makes economic sense to understand how will climate change affect my operations and my business, both now and in a few years time. How does my business contribute to the sustainable agenda? How is my business incorporating sustainability in what we do? Because it just, to be honest, as a business, it just makes sense to understand that from an economic perspective. And also, how are the the places in which I operate, how is it affecting the environment, the people of the, the area in which I operate, my customers, how is climate change affecting them now, how will it affect them that later in future? Um, And what can I do as a business? What can we put in place? What can we start doing? What can we start talking about? What can be our aspirations and our goals? And this is not just about greenwashing, which we've seen, which is, you know, many countries and companies now claiming they're sustainable, but actually really putting a thought process behind it and um, knowing that you, you can't do everything in one go. But you can start from somewhere and you can start talking about it and, and creating goals around this too. So, like COVID-19, it seems that real action really began when people started seeing how they were affected themselves or how it was going to affect their own people in their own country. And, and that's a sad reality. That's a dear shame. But what we can see is that with climate change the effects are happening right now they're being affecting countries or that are contributing the least to climate change at the moment but actually all around us we're seeing high resource countries low resource countries different settings being affected by climate change and we do have a role to play we do have an ability to do something that is hope it does not need to be an afterthought and it is something where we can put climate change mitigation in place now The last thing I'll talk about is government and politics. And we could spend, we could spend hours discussing this. And the point of this podcast is to talk from a community perspective and from an individual's perspective. But what I will say is that if you work in government, if you are uh, in any uh, uh, facet of government or to do with uh, political relations, anything along those lines, 
and climate change will affect every sector. So the voice that you have is huge as well. And even if you don't, having these discussions to see what is the local MP doing? What is the constituency in which I live in? What are they doing on climate change? What are they saying about it? What are they promising to do on it? How can I advocate? How can I become more politically aware? How can I attend protests about this? And it's not this podcast, it's not about shifting the blame on individual responsibility and saying that, you know, just that the actions of us alone uh, without government can change what's going on. But as I said, the podcast is today to talk about us, what we can do. But at the same time, from being at a point of understanding our burden, understanding where we serve, where we contribute to, it's like there is hope for what we can do. But also it allows us to be more vocal about what the government is doing. It allows us to have a bit more knowledge and expertise in our area to then challenge a government in certain sectors or or um, you know contribute to different policy. So that's what I'll share on that. That is what I'll share on that, guys. I just want to share some of the areas that I thought about in terms of climate change and what we can do as a community on this. I would love to know your own thoughts on this. Join our Instagram to and DM me. Send me an email. My email is in the show notes about what your thoughts are on this. And I will share your ideas as well, share your contributions. And I will definitely learn myself from what you have to share. If the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything or taught me anything in the past year it's to love so much harder um yeah to love so much harder to to speak to family and friends more uh to celebrate life at every earliest opportunity but also know that we all have a role to play in how our community deals with a pandemic right and i hope that this helps to share and say that we all have a role to play in climate change and um, its effects on our communities, on our families, on the people that we love and care for and the people that are close to us but also far away from us. All right, take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed listening. Now, if you like this episode, then don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so that you can be notified every time an episode comes out. Please rate and review. I'll be so grateful if you could leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And this is so important for a new podcaster like me for getting these episodes out to people. If you want to stay connected, then join us on Instagram at Happy Healthy Us Podcast. Lastly, if you want to get even more connected or share any questions, then make sure you join our mailing list at takia at happyhealthyuspodcast.com to receive more inspiring content. Plus, I would love to hear from you, feedback and questions. So stay happy and healthy, my friends, and keep building you and your community.